Tennessee, beautiful city, just a little, uh, I guess it's south of here, isn't it? From Memphis, Tennessee, he's the founder of Straight Talk Ministries. Welcome evangelist Steve Yeager. God bless you, brother. God bless you, Miles. God Welcome bless you, to Miles. the program. Yeah. Good to be here. Delighted, delighted uh, to be here. I love the term evangelist because it's a Bible term, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Paul said to Timothy, he was a pastor, of course. He had a local congregation uh, to work with. But he said to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Yes, sir. Even though you're pastoring, do the work of an evangelist. But the evangelist is also a specific gift and office and calling. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about how you got into the kingdom first. All right. Well, I, I was born and raised in the Assemblies of God denominational church. Sure. I uh, was saved at a young age. Hallelujah. Uh, probably about seven or eight years old. I uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at that age. Praise I received God. the call of God upon my life as early as I can remember. Mm. I began preaching at the age of uh, 13 years old Wonderful. Uh, on National Youth Day uh, there in, in my home church in yes. Hannibal, Missouri. I uh, felt the call of God upon my life, and that's the beginning of my life or the beginning of God transforming my life and changing me to the place of where I am mm. today. Praise God. Praise God. I also love the fact, Steve, that before you went full-time on the road in evangelism, you spent years in the pastorate. Tell us about that. Yes, sir, I did. Uh, actually, for uh, approximately one year, I pastored in Henderson, Tennessee, and then uh, I did youth pastorate and associate work uh, in and around uh, various churches and places throughout the United States of America. Hmm. Well, I, I honor that because I think it's so valuable for an evangelist who's traveling yes. from church to church to have some pastoring in the background so that he understands the stresses on a pastor, understands the needs of a congregation, because you can come in with a fiery word, but you have to understand how that applies to the congregation. Right. Yes, sir. It is imperative that we as ministers of the gospel, men and women, to understand and to realize, to be able to relate and to be able to interact with the fivefold ministry gift mm -hmm. that you've been relating to, which is Ephesians 4 and 11, mm -hmm. which declares to us that God has given us some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry. So we are a gift to the body of Christ. An apostle is just as much of a gift to the body of Christ as the pastor. Yes. And an evangelist is just as much of a gift to the body of Christ as the pastor. So we have to understand that they bring a grace, they bring a dimension that, that only they can bring to the body of Christ. And so we, uh, you're, you're exactly right. As, as a pastor or having pastored, it helps me to understand and to relate to pastors because yes. I understand the mundane things that they deal with, with people and, and, and just the going through life and that kind of thing. So it helps us to really be able to, to have the grace to be able to embrace them to understand that. Absolutely. Amen. I'm sure that, you know, Paul, as he was encouraging the churches, he was also encouraging the leadership. You know, not just the people, but, exactly. but from the head down. And an evangelist does well to start with the pastor and, and bless his life and minister into his life. And then it'll, it'll work its way down through all the body and all the people. Yes, ma'am. Well, truly a man of God that is sent by God will have a word for everybody in the building. Amen. From the headship yes. to, to the janitor. Uh -huh. Truly a man of God will have an ability to be able to touch everybody. I believe Christ is our greatest example in the Word of God that Jesus was able to be relatable to everybody. Yes. And so a true man and woman of God that comes into a place, he's going to have a word that he's going to be able to touch in the realm of the Spirit. Yeah. See, I love what Paul said. Paul says, I don't have to know you by the flesh. I know you after the Spirit. Yes. And so if I come in as a man of God led by the Spirit of God, you're exactly right, right woman of God. I'll be able to relate to the man of God, have a, div a divine word in a divine season at a divine time to that man of God and to that body of Christ. And it yes. is an imperative that we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to the Holy Ghost, sensitive to the power of God to be released in that church, Amen. in and that then, local body. And then when that evangelist leaves, the whole place feels like I'm refreshed. God has moved. He's ministered to, to everybody. Yes, ma'am. It's a wonderful yes, launch into ministry. It is. As the for the church to go on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, Steve, tell us, tell us what happened in your life that transitioned you from pastoring to evangelism. Well, man of God, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> uh, Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness oh, yes. and the amplified right standing uh -huh. and right relationship. Yes. yes. I came to a place about nine years ago, man of God, where I had to seek God, not for ministry, not for position, 
not for power, oh. but I sought God. Hallelujah. I began to seek Him. I began to pursue Him yes. with everything inside of me, with every fiber and every being. It wasn't about religion. It was about coming to a relationship right. with God. Hallelujah. It was about coming in covenant with God and saying, God, if I never preach again, if I never get to, to, to grace the pulpit again, just to have you and you alone. And I oh, begin to man. seek God. You're starting to, you're Nine stirring years me up ago. now. Well, That's brother, I, it's, it's fire in my soul. It's fire in my belly. Yeah. Nine years ago, I went on a 40-day fast. Mm -hmm. Had never fasted 40 days and never had fasted 40 nights. That in itself mm -hmm. is a supernatural phenomenon in itself. Yes. Because I was the type of person that before I had my first meal of the day, I was a grouch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be real, yes. okay? Yeah. But on this 40-day fast, God began to lead me and God began to guide me. Oh, every day I'd get up in the morning, just like most people are getting up and going to a daily job. I got up every morning. I sought God's face, got into the Word of God, gave, gave myself wholly and completely to Christ. And about 35 days, men of God, in this, in this 40 day fast, God spoke to me very clearly and very precisely. See, God's got a clear word yes, and right. a precise word, a tailored word right. for the body of believers. God's got a word that is tailored to his people. He's just looking for us to really seek him with everything inside of us. He said, seek, aim after, strive after, look for, intensify yourself to come to that place where you sell yourself totally out to God, right. that you become radical, sold out the whole route. And as I began on this 30 day, in about 35 days into this 40-day fast, God began to speak to me and he said to me, he said, I never called you to be a youth pastor, mm. although we need youth pastors. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, I never called you to be a senior pastor, mm -hmm. although we need senior pastors. God said, I called you to be an evangelist. Oh. And man of God, as I could remember as early in my, in my, in my creative years, if you will, in the early years, of, as, as early as seven or eight years old, I remember the drive. I remember the, 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 the thriving in my soul and in my spirit uh -huh. as I would watch preach as I would watch evangelists, especially on the television, and I would begin to be drawn by that gifting, by that anointing, by that power that is empowered in, inside of that gifting. Yes. And God began to make it very clear to me, and God spoke to me, and he said, I never called you to be. Uh, uh, nothing but an evangelist. He mm. said, I want you to go and I want you to take my signs and my wonders and my miracles. Glory. And I want you to take it into the earth. And so I, by the grace of God, have done exactly what the Lord has told me. Here we are nine years later and we're continuing to see the mighty power of Jesus Christ. I just closed out a 30-day meeting oh, well. uh, just north of us here where I'm at right now in now, Missouri. a 30-day meeting. That's you don't hear of those much anymore. No, sir. No, sir. I told, I told a church just recently in Memphis, I told them, I said, I said, some pre Preachers, uh, some evangelists, the, 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 the typical evangelist can't last much past the seven days because he's got his seven messages, yes. right, you see. So you know it's got to be Holy Ghost led if you're going to go 30 days and 30 nights where you submit yourself to the Lord. But uh, God was gracious to us. God was kind to us. Every day I would begin to seek the Lord. The very things that I learned. The very things I learned, men of God, through the, through the wilderness, through the times of training, through that, 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 that time of fasting, that wilderness experience, the very things that I learned were the very things that I utilized to get the heart and the mind and the will of God so that I could release a now word mm -hmm. to a now people because God knew exactly who was going to be in those 30-day meetings. Yeah. God knew exactly who was going to be there and exactly what their needs were. And God is a precise God. Mm. And He has an ability to bring a precise word. Even Bless people that are too in today, man of God, there is a precise word yes. that is going to a precise people to bring them and elevate them to a greater place.